Hello there. Today we're going to replace the screen on a HP laptop. This is a member of the family, so I'm going to help them out and fix this screen for them. They've bought the part number. The screen needs replacing, it's been damaged, and the model number for this laptop in particular is the Pavilion 15 inch E092SA laptop. You need a small set of screwdrivers like these, so multiple sizes, Phillips and Flathead. See, it's damaged, needs replacing. Okay, first things first, turn the machine over, take your battery out, pull your lever across and the battery will be released. Inside, underneath the battery tray, it tells you the model number, serial number, product number. And then slide this front cover towards the, the front of the machine. Next thing to do, take out the hard drive, just so it's out of the way. Release the SATA cable, power and data, put that aside. The memory doesn't need to come out, essentially it can stay in, so that's okay, leave that alone. There are individual screws to take out for the chassis here, that go all the way around the machine, so take those out first. Once all of the screws are out of the chassis itself, there are three at the front of the machine here, under the tray. Next thing I did was to remove the DVD drive, the rewritable SATA drive. There's a screw that secures that in place and do that. And then push your DVD drive out. It'll just slide from here. There's a little hole, push it out, and it will slide out here. Put that aside. It's not essential, but it's just easier later on when you're trying to get the cover off and, on, and the keyboard and things like that. Okay, next two screws, you've got two here. So one there, one there where my fingers are. One there, one there. Okay, next you've got a keyboard screw in the center here where my finger is. And you also have two screws, uh, one under the hard, two under the hard drive to take out. You'll also have a screw here, just hidden away. I couldn't quite see it because of where I'm sitting um, for the keyboard, second keyboard screw. Okay. The next thing you do is you want to take the front cover of the laptop off. So between the screen and the keyboard it pops off but the easiest way to do that is from the DVD tray um, that you've already released. So push down on the DVD tray and you'll see the cover will start to come off here. Just lift that up. You can see where my finger is holding it apart. So that's the screen. This part here, the top. Obviously, that, we need to take that out later, but you need to get to the screws first, the hinges. So, pop this off along here, and you'll hear it cracking as I pull it off. You might need a screwdriver to do this. So just run your finger along there. It will slowly pop off. Just be gentle as you go. See it popping off? Okay. Now the machine is ready to come off. The reason it won't is because there are screws under the keyboard. Okay, so you need to pop the keyboard out as well. Just pop the keyboard off. Just go along it and it will pop off from the top. It's always the top. As you can see, the keyboard comes out. Just lift up the little plastic. There's a little bit out of the way. There's a piece of black plastic. Um, you just lift it up in the air and the, key the keyboard ribbon cable will just pull out gently. Put that aside. Do the same thing, lift the plastic up and then just pull the ribbon cable free. And sorry, one final screw up here. There we go. Okay, this one now, glue that layer. So pull off, as you can see, looks like that underneath. That's what it looks like. Covers off, put that aside. Because the parts we need to get to are here, so all this just for this, I know. And then there's, sorry, just one and two there, I couldn't see. And then two here as well, two each side to take out. And then there's the Wi-Fi ribbon cable, 
and Wi-Fi cable that comes along to your Wi-Fi chip, which you need to disconnect as well because the antenna goes up into the screen. So when you take the screen off and pull it off and take the screen out, the panel, um, nine times out of ten, the Wi-Fi signal cables are attached to it. Okay, so the screen will now just come off and um, remember the um, signal and power cables are still attached which is this one here, it's like a thin ribbon attached to the motherboard here. So you can pull that off and then remember that it needs to go on the same way because we need to transfer this part from this screen to the next. There's not an awful lot left when it looks like this. You've got literally the motherboard there and the remnants of a working computer, so keep that side safe for now. Okay, I'm going to work on the screen. So the screen isn't replaced like you think it is. You take the front cover off and then you can pull the screen out. Just work your way around it with a flat screwdriver. And it will pop up, it will pull apart as gently as you go, really. So just release the front face on it, just very gently, it will slowly come off as you pull around on it. Quite simple, really, you just got to take your time with it, really. and then just remove that front cover and just put it to the side for a minute. Right, like as I was saying before, the Wi-Fi signal cable um, goes into the screen and up to the top here, so be careful when you're removing this screen. It's only held in with like screws, um, but obviously the cable goes underneath it and around to the top here and here, so we'll bring that up there. You'll see they terminate at the top. So you've got the white cable coming here and the black one to here. There's obviously white and black there. Um, the signal and power to the, the actual LED screen itself go to the back of it, so here you can see where the ribbon finishes, and it'll be about here somewhere. You'll see in a minute when we take the screen out. Alright, so we're out of there, and we've got these this cable member, so pull that with you. This will now come out of here without any fuss. Then release this cable. Okay. So we need to keep this cable safe because we need to use this again in a minute. This sticky stuff fastens it in place, so once you push it into the new screen, you stick it down to hold it in place. So just keep that aside for now. So this is the old screen, but remember we need this mounting kit. So um, the kit you can see strapped to it, like the hinges, we need this for the new monitor, so it needs to come off. Um, same for both sides. So now in theory, this screen is done for. We don't need this for anything else. It's damaged here. I mean, the screen itself is cracked and smashed. Keep this safe. Just throw it, you know, throw it aside for now, and then put the bring the new screen in and fit the mounts to it and put it all back together. Make sure you get it the right way around, of course. Uh, obviously the bottom needs to be where the, hinge, the hinges are. So the 
cable just slides up inside the um, little socket. It'll click in once it's in place. And then just stick the sticky stuff down on top of it. Simple as that. Done. I find it easy if you click these two pieces together first and it all sort of lines up and you can just sort of click it down as you can hear it all clicks back together nice good solid clicks signifying that it's closing up nicely okay see it's all coming back together now nicely and then obviously you've got two screws to put in the little covers on top and get it all reconnected again so let's go ahead and plug it back into the motherboard as well so here we go so I'll just turn this around so we can see and just line up your Okay, and then just reattach the ruining cable. So, we've got this cable here that um, powers and gives you your output on the screen. So, the black, the black Wi Fi signal cable goes to the point closest to the screw. Okay, next thing to do is to put the cover back on and obviously reconnect the keyboard and other ribbon cables attached to it, like a trackpad, things like that. So you can see that we've got to reattach the ribbon here to the trackpad so the mouse will work. Okay, the keyboard, I mean, as the assembly itself will actually just click down. So just re-click that back on. You see it gets it'll be flush around the outside here when it's ready and done. See it's all clicked back on there, so that's ready. We can put the screws back in in a minute. Um, we've got two here to put in and then three along the top and they're all the same size. put the keyboard back on now. So get your keyboard and connect the ribbon up first. So this is the awkward bit. So you just put your, your ribbon in and just slide it into the slot like that. And then click the plastic down here again. The keyboard will then just slide into place at the bottom and as you let it go, you can click it down all around the outside, here, locking into place. Okay, keyboard's done. And next job is to turn it over, put the screws back in underneath. Okay, um, next thing, you want to put your DVD drive back in. So your DVD drive just goes in, connects in like that, and you've got a securing screw like before. And then your hard drive, connect the ribbon SATA cable. It's the battery to put back in after this. And then we turn it on for the first time and see if it's worked. So you can see, so that's it back together. Okay, so now comes the moment of truth. We just turn it back over, turn it on, and see if uh, see how it, we get on with the screen and whether it works okay. Uh, just ignore the dirt on there. So let's have a little look and see what it does, shall we? Okay. So 
let's have a little look, so power button. Okay, there we go. Thanks for watching guys. As always, I'll see you later.